All right, guys, so in this video, we're checking out the, the Blue Yeti EB70 power station generator. So this is like a giant battery backup. And uh, obviously a lot of the people that are gonna be interested in this are maybe gonna be using this for like things like uh, outdoor camping, obviously off-grid type of uh, situations. I'm gonna talk about mainly about the way I've been using it um, in terms of my FPV drones, uh, charging up a lot of small batteries, you know, batteries that, like, for example, cameras, small drone batteries, etc. That's gonna be the primary focus for at least my review. Now, I'll talk about all the specs and everything that comes with this particular one. I think the biggest difference on this particular uh, power station is that it comes with a different battery chemistry than some of the other ones you've seen out there. This one comes with lithium iron phosphate batteries. And the main advantage of that one is going to be um, more charge cycles. So they're claiming up to uh, 3,500 charge cycles up to 80%. So compared to a lot of other power stations out there, uh, this will probably have a, a better longevity. Um, also, the chemistry is more stable, so less chances of uh, uh, battery fire. Um, there's a lot of also important overcurrent protection, over voltage protection in the unit itself. So we'll take a, a closer look at all of the available inputs and outputs on this particular device, as well as its pros and cons and the things that I like and I don't like about it. Okay, so in terms of everything you get with the package, um, you get the power station itself. You do get an external power supply. Um, that you have for AC charging up the internal battery. You do get a, a cigarette lighter adapter, so if you want to charge it off of your car, uh, car battery, it's um, uh, this is cigarette light adapters for that. It takes about seven to eight hours on 12 volts, three to four hours on 24 volts, depends on the voltage system of your uh, DC battery in your car. And then you got your solar panel cables here. These are some MC4 connectors. They do have a 200 watt solar panel that they sell separately, but uh, it's currently not available. Um, if it comes available later, I'll link it down in the description. Uh, unfortunately, I won't be able to test that. I think I can uh, show you how this works with the panels I've got with the um, EcoFlow that I got in a previous video that I reviewed uh, a couple weeks back. So looking around the unit itself, uh, on top here you have uh, basically a wireless charging pad for like phones and stuff. I think it's up to 15 watts, it's pretty nice. You got this foldable handle, which does make it a little bit more compact and uh, easy to carry. It's a very rugged handle. This whole, whole, the whole build construction this is very nice. It doesn't feel cheap at all. Uh, it does feel pretty solid. Uh, the screen here is kind of simple. So you have basically wattage on your input and your output so it shows you what kind of power usage you have. The battery indicator here is a very simple five level battery indicator from like 20, 40, 60, 80, 100%. And it does not show you uh, individual percentages, which is I think a uh, disadvantage, I think in my opinion. Got a light here, uh, two different levels of brightness plus your SOS. And then last, uh, the, the fourth click will turn it off. The input here is up to 200 watts max, so it's uh, 12 to 28 volts. I heard it will go up to 30 volts before it shuts off. It does have a built-in MPPT solar charge controller, so uh, it does. It's, I think with that, it's a little bit more efficient in terms of how it charges off of solar. And if you do charge off of solar, they're saying it's also similar to charging off a of car battery around 78 hours if you have the maximum 200 watts of power. Now, of course, you know, um, solar isn't going to be up at the maximum all the time, so uh, it's probably going to be something somewhat less. And since it's 200 watts max, if you want to run panels in serial or parallel, you probably aren't going to be able to if you want to charge up the internal battery faster on solar. So it looks like 78 hours is going to be your best bet uh, or maximum ability on solar for this particular power station. Uh, moving on to the DC output section here, and turn this on. So this little button turns on the screen. The screen times out after about a minute uh, to save battery. Uh, you have two 100 watt USB-C type um, connectors here, uh, power delivery 3.0. So you can power up and charge uh, pretty modern laptops that will charge off USB-C 
up to 100 watts, so things like uh, MacBook Airs, um, la lighter, you know, um, uh, Windows laptops will up to 100 watts will charge off of the USB-C, and of course you can charge up a lot of other things off of the USB-C as well. Two um, old style 5 volt 3 amp USB-A ports here. You have your uh, 12 volt 10 amp uh, 5521 barrel connector ports here. So if you have devices that can charge off of a barrel port, uh, barrel connector, you can have these two available only up to 10 amps. Same with the cigarette lighter adapter, it's 12 volts up to 10 amps. So these are limited up to 120 watts in maximum power output on the DC here. So if you want more than 120 uh, watts of power, or, yeah, if you, if you want more than 120 watts of power, you're gonna have to use the AC side, which will go up to 700 watts of power. There's a built-in 700 watt inverter inside here for these four AC outlets. So you have two on top here with the little uh, spacer here for the third prong and then two standard two, two prong AC plugs. Just power that up, turn that on. There's a little light here. It's not that easily seen. It's very dim and it's kind of a white color, but uh, I wish it was a little bit brighter. So it's hard to tell if it's actually on or not. The uh, inverter in here is a pure sine wave inverter. Now, I'm kind of wondering why they didn't include the, the ability to do the internal um, charging with the uh, internal inverter instead of using an external inverter to charge the batteries. Uh, that's how I, would, I think that they would be able, you would do it with some of the other uh, power stations out there. The uh, AC charger is actually built in, and I believe they're using the exact same inverter that is actually built into the unit. So it's a little strange that they're using a separate external power supply for that. Maybe they're trying to save weight. It is um, a couple of pounds for that, perhaps. Maybe that's why, because maybe you, you would leave that at home and then you could just uh, plug it in at home when you're charging it. Now, the thing about the, AC, the external AC power brick is that it is always on when you plug it in. So you plug into the wall, turns on, and there's an internal fan that's on all the time. It's very loud. It's approximately 58 to 60 dB, pretty annoying. It's louder than the fan that's in, inside the power station. Now, when you're powering up stuff from the power station and you're drawing less than 100 watts of power, the internal fan on the power station does not turn on, so it's completely silent, which is nice. After you exceed about 100 watts, it will uh, turn the internal fan on, and it's not as loud as the external power supply brick. It's uh, it's, it's quieter, it's not as noisy, it's like around 40, 48, 45 dB, somewhere in there, so it's not too bad. Now the thing about this um, uh, inverter here that's on the AC output section, it is 700 watts max, and they're saying it can burst up to 1400 watts, but I've found the um, way it works on the, um, basically the burst output is a little unusual. Um, it, for some devices, it doesn't do anything, like it doesn't work at all. I tried it on a heat gun that uh, will draw about uh, 1000 watts, and it wouldn't even power it up at all. Um, I know that like the EcoFlow, that um, River, River Station, River Pro, River Pro, I think it was what it's called, the, the one I reviewed previously, it would actually do a little trick where it would uh, allow the amperage to remain high, but reduce the voltage to basically keep it within the, the, uh, the range of the inverter. Um, but this one doesn't seem to do that. So you, you're, what you're gonna be using this for is gonna be kind of hit and miss. Um, some of the higher than 700 watt devices will work and some of them may not work. So generally speaking, I would only recommend this, I think for someone that's gonna be using this on lower power usage. So nothing like a microwave or like a stove, like an electric stove, anything that's gonna be drawing a lot of power, like way over 700 watts, I wouldn't recommend this at all. But for me, for my purposes, it seems fine. If you're gonna be charging a lot of smaller devices, uh, it's totally fine. Uh, you know, if you're drawing less than 700 watts, this, this device will work great for you. Now, considering the efficiency of the conversion here, so basically the internal battery here is 716 watt hours. That's what it's fully charged capacity is what it's, what it's rated for. Now, I found that depending upon 
uh, what you're charging up. So if you're charging up a lot of really small batteries, for example, uh, the efficiency conversion is a little bit lower versus say if you're just doing like, um, if you just want to test the efficiency of the internal components of this particular power station, if you're just testing that on the bench in a laboratory setting, you're probably going to get about 85 to 90% efficiency in terms of the amount of energy you can extract out of this power station, out of the 716 watt hours. But if you're charging up a lot of smaller batteries, um, obviously you're limited by not only the efficiency of the components inside this power station, but also the other devices that are charging. There's always going to be some amount of losses whenever you're charging other, when you're basically charging batteries from other batteries. And, uh, and it's no different in this case. So I'm finding that when I'm charging a lot of smaller batteries on this one, I'm getting roughly 75 to 80% efficiency uh, in terms of what I'm able to extract out of this power station, which is not surprising at all. I mean, that's actually better than expected. Uh, but if you're charging like say larger, a fewer batteries, but larger batteries, then I think you're going to find that it's gonna be a little bit more efficient. Now, for you guys that are charging up um, FPV drone batteries, uh, I would recommend sticking to the 700 watt AC output here if, you have, if your charger has AC av av availability. If you're charging off of the cigarette lighter adapter here or the barrel plugs, you're limited to 120 watts. So if you're charging up a large 6S battery and drawing like a lot of amps, um, what you'll find is the power station will basically cause a fault you'll get a message on the screen here that says you've, you have a short and then the DC output will shut down and then you'll have to basically turn it off and turn it back on to reset it uh, to turn it back basically to basically uh, turn the power station back on. Um, so you have, to, you have to be careful on how you set up your charging. So like on a 6S battery, it's going to be drawing about 25 volts and uh, you know at, uh, divide that into 120 watts minus some efficiency losses you're looking at about a maximum of about five amps. If you go above five amps, uh, what you'll find is you'll, the power station will shut down. It'll, draw, it'll be drawing more than 120 watts, more than this uh, DC output can handle. And uh, you'll just basically trip the internal um, short circuit control meter inside here and it will shut down. So if you want to draw, if you're going to be charging up big batteries at more than 120 watts, you're going to, going to be limited to the AC outputs over here at 700 watts. And obviously, like, as I mentioned before, if you go above 700 watts, you're going to probably run into some problems. Okay, so now in terms of like the overall weight of the unit, it's about 21 and a half pounds by itself. Throw in the external um, AC charger, it's at, that's at about two pounds, about 23, a little over 23 pounds total weight to carry around. It is definitely heavier uh, than um, the power stations that are based on uh, lithium ion chemistry instead of lithium iron phosphate. I think that's where, you know, that's the trade-off you're going to make. So uh, you, you're trading off um, a more stable chemistry for uh, additional weight and also long, a long, uh, basically a longer lifetime for the power station. So you're going to be able to use it for many more years compared to um, power stations based on the lithium ion battery chemistry. But then the advantages uh, conversely is that you're going to get faster charging like the lithium ion ones and charger charge up faster but uh, you know the the life lifespan of those particular power stations are going to be shorter because you're basically stressing out the batteries quicker on those types of chemistries all right so i am uh plug i plugged in the solar panel that i got from ecoflow it uses the same mc4 connectors and you see i'm drawing about 102 watts of input which is you know obviously half of the 200 watts max on here and this is a 160 watt panel so I'll just show you here running the cable around the side of the car up here these are the mc4 connectors and then this is the panel up top <laughs> put on the roof of my car here because i wanted to get the max i guess basically sun's almost directly overhead it's a little bit um off center obviously not exactly directly overhead. And this panel I found is not super efficient. Um, it's rated for 160 watts and it's pretty much maximum brightness right now. And, and I'm only putting in 100 watts for this panel. So obviously I don't have the 
of the Blue, Blue Yeti version of their panel that says, uh, supposedly it was 200 watts, and that's one that uh, they would recommend for this one. Uh, I don't know if you're gonna get a, a 200 watts in that one, but at 100 watts, it's half of the 200 watts max. So uh, charging this up on solar, it's gonna be probably double the time. Now, I am kind of close to the top of the battery here, so it might be limiting the amount of power coming in because uh, if, you're at the, if you're in a lower state of charge, it could be that you might get more power input, so it could be artificially limiting the amount of input power based on the state of charge of the battery here to protect it. So that I'm not 100% sure, I'm, I, I'm suspecting that's probably the case because I think when I plugged this in on the EcoFlow, I was getting more than 100 watts on full, full sunshine. It was like, uh, I think when I was testing, it was closer to 130. So I'm, I think I think that it is actually limiting it based on the state of charge. It's around between 60 and 80 percent here. It doesn't actually show you the exact percentage, which is kind of unfortunate. Okay, so what do I like and what don't I like about this power station? Um, the fact that it's got this uh, lithium iron phosphate battery chemistry does give it a long lifespan. I would say 30. 40% more than ones based off of lithium ion chemistry. Uh, the downside is that it does charge up slower and there's a lot of limitations in terms of power input and output uh, to protect the batteries, but that gives you a, the power station will last a lot longer for you. So if that's more important, then that's gonna be a pro. Some of the cons, in my opinion, are um, the 120 watt limit here on the DC output here on the cigarette lighter. I tend to use this more on the road with my LiPo chargers. And um, I mostly charge up small batteries, so it's not that big of a deal, but every once in a while I wanna charge up a large battery. And I'm limited to about five amps power draw, whereas it can go 12 volts and up to 10 amps on here. But if I'm trying to charge up a 6S battery at 25 volts, uh, it's drawing uh, more, you know, closer to 200 watts, and that's gonna be too much for this. I do like that it does have the two 100 watt um, USB-C power delivery ports here instead of just one. That's a nice feature. And then you do have extra AC plugs here, uh, you know, four, which is quite a few, and up to 700 watts. Now, obviously, if I want to charge up uh, bigger LiPo batteries, I can use the AC output here on 700 watts, but that just means I have to carry around another, um, basically an AC to DC power brick for my LiPo charger to ex access that extra 700 watts, uh, which is an extra equipment I would rather not have to carry around, but apparently if I want to use this one, use this particular power station, I'll have to do that for this one. So it's, it's a little bit of a downside for me. Now this is a fair bit heavier, uh, 21 and a half pounds, plus the power brick, uh, closer to 23 and a half pounds. So yeah, if, you know, if you're looking for something lighter, that's going to be a downside for you. Uh, but you know that's the that's the trade-off you get for going with the lithium iron phosphate chemistry. It does come with a two-year warranty. Um, I think a lot of other ones only come with a one-year warranty. So if you're looking for something that's going to have a, a longer warranty period, then obviously the two-year warranty is going to be a pro for you. I don't like the the screen here. Uh, it doesn't give you individual percentages for the battery and not a lot of information here on terms of input and output. Obviously it's very simple and basic, but mostly this not um, being on here uh, in terms of individual percentages is a downside for me. The thing that about the, the buttons here, you know, um, if you press it, it turns the screen on, but for example, on the AC side, it actually turns off the AC. You can't see the light turning on and off, but it'll turn on and off over here then uh, press it again, and then it turns off these plugs here. So uh, I, I usually, I think if you press this one, it'll actually turn off the power to these plugs. So if you want to see the screen again, I, I recommend not pressing this one. This will actually power off this section. But if you want to see the, the uh, screen again, you just press the DC button here. Now, if the thing is like, it's currently on, but the light isn't very bright. So uh, it's hard to tell that it's actually on. You have to look at it very, very, very clear, closely and it's actually drawing power right now, so you might leave it on inadvertently, and I don't believe it has a timeout feature where it'll actually shut off. Um, so you have to actually press and hold, and then this light should go off here. Yeah. So now it's actually off, so the way you can tell is uh, if you press the button, 
the screen will turn off much quicker. You can see that. That, that, that means it's actually off. If it stays on, obviously the screen stays on, that means the, the power station is powered on. Anyway, that's uh, gonna do it for this video. Um, hopefully this will help you guys out in terms of making a decision whether this is the right power station for you or not. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section down below, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.